We live in extremely transformative times. Many of our clients are suffering a lot of pressure to adapt to the way the world, businesses and consumers are changing. We believe that it's very important for us to get a really good understanding of the challenges that our clients are facing and what they expect from us as a design firm. What we are finding is at the measure that the, the projects and challenges of our clients are becoming more complex, um, it's never really only about the product anymore, but it's about the system that holds it in place, about the service that surrounds it, and also the business model that sustains it. So it's, um, it's quite an interesting evolution that design has taken. I think the key challenges in the automotive industry have to do with big changes in technology that are happening right now, changes in drivetrain, connectivity that is coming in, changes in user interface that need to happen, but also the fact that customer tastes and preferences around the world seem to drift apart. Uh, and certainly also uh, a challenge will be uh, to interest future generations into uh, the world of mobility. During the last years, I think our industry has successfully faced the demand for more efficient appliances. Um, household appliances make up to one third of private energy consumption. And this has been really the main market driver here in Europe during the last years. In the years to come, I think our industry and also we as a company have to face the digital transition. So that means that the next generation of appliances will be connected. I think the main challenge we have now um, is to really understand what it is that we can bring that makes a difference to the user. My big challenge today is not so much externally, it's almost more internally. It's making sure that we're transforming this company into a user-driven company. There is a lot going on. Uh, there's a, a real belief all the way from the CEO down to you know, all the people I interact with. But that to me is a real challenge. Yeah, I think in Philips, of course, we've got a broad portfolio with working on the one side on healthcare. On the other side, we've got uh, consumer, consumer propositions, and then also we've got lighting. What we see increasingly is um, a movement from product design as a center, as a core competence, to really think more holistically about the entire experience. Um, obviously in healthcare that's vitally important that you're thinking about the patient experience and not just the physical design of the product. Um, but we see it in everything we do today. So it can be a toothbrush or a beauty product. Um, and we have to think about the context of use. We have to think about how these products could potentially form part of a larger ecosystem. Uh, and increasingly as we see these devices becoming connected to the cloud and becoming clients of the internet, uh, we have to think about how the business is going to create services and software solutions that will bring value to users. So the product designers who are traditionally sitting at the core of this suddenly now are faced with all of these different demands on them where they think more holistically about the user experience. Which means we can't do that alone as a design team. We have to, or as a design competence being product design, we need UX, UI, we need software and firmware developers, we need um, uh, people to come in and join with us in co-creating these solutions. Our clients um, today face a large number of challenges and a lot of it really has to come down to the fact that whether they're customers who are dealing in, say, uh, product design or their customers were dealing in uh, the creation of media for entertainment or advertising. Um, everything they work with is becoming increasingly digital. So the tools are digital, that they're mostly working with data. And because of this, and uh, the fact that the tools can be acquired anywhere, um, means that all of these industries are becoming very global. As long as you can buy the tools and as long as you can have the data, you can do this kind of work. And the ability for a new company to start up, um, a new young company to start up with fresh innovative ideas 
today is, is a very achievable thing. The, the, the barrier to entry is actually very low. They also faced um, other challenges, which is that the, the quality of the work that they need to produce goes up and up and up over time. The kind of quality threshold that people expect is always increasing. Um, they don't necessarily get greater budgets for doing this kind of work. Um, the complexity of the work increases. The, the speed with which they have to produce um, work also goes up over time. And so all of these things are, are, are constantly in motion and I think it, it makes the work they do increasingly challenging but probably it's also kind of fun because there's constant innovation going on. The big challenge of the uh, banking industry is to be customer centric. The financial services are highly regulated at global and local levels and the customer experience is not part of these regulations. At BBVA, we have started this customer-centric process several years ago. I was the Chief Innovation Officer and now I'm the Director of Corporate Transformation. And during these years, I have the opportunity to work with design companies from the States and Europe. I've been working with IDEO, Continuum, and Gravity and Mermedi. In, in Spain. My experience is that you can provide us a completely new perspective about our customer expectations. I think uh, the design industry or design consultancies can help uh, if they are working on a wide variety of product categories because I think the answers uh, cannot come from within one product category especially when we're talking about the uh, user interface, for example. We as a team have to face digital transition as well. So our team structure has to evolve from uh, a team of highly specialized industrial designers to a more generalistic team structure. I think especially user interface design is getting more and more important and uh, this is where we still have to rely heavily on external resources now. I am looking at design as um, maybe the, the one and really possibly the only one function that can bring that coherence all the way through. It doesn't mean that we're the only ones um, uh, that are relevant or that, are, um, that have the mandate to do that, but because we're generalists, we can look at all the different aspects of things. I think in order for design really to be making a difference within a company, it needs to be design driven. But what it means to be design driven is not so much that you have a big design chief or guru, or even a design chief or guru with you know, a bunch of evangelists. It is that the whole company understand that design is an approach, a methodology, um, a way of looking at problems that um, will always systematically, again, put the users at the center and make sure that you're um, aligned with the brand strategy and what the brand really means. The big opportunity we've had in Philips is to use design as a, as a facilitator in, in getting people around the table to deliver these experiences. Um, you know, in the past, maybe we've tried to do this stuff ourselves. So we've, uh, we've brought in people research as a capability, design research. We've got sociologists and anthropologists as part of the design team. Even then, that's still not enough to deliver these kind of ecosystems going forwards. It may sound obvious, but one of the important things we do um, is keep in touch with customers. It sounds very obvious, but it's, it's very important because although we are tool providers and software creators rather than uh, technical people, um, as our customers are, um, we are still producing things which have to be used by people and it only works if you have a constant iterative process. I think um, an interesting part of the way um, that uh, design is done today and the way that media is created today is it's a very integrated process. So most of the successful companies we work with um, either integrate extremely well with their clients' processes or clearly there's a lot of people who have taken work in-house which previously used to be outsourced. We have designed machines like ATMs for Europe or drive-throughs for the States 
and a complete customer service experience through all the touch points. And nowadays we are def designing the employee experience because you cannot expect to change the service towards your customer if you don't change internally as well. I think design agencies uh, will have to be able to work on a wide variety of, of product categories. Uh, they will have to have, I think, a good understanding uh, of customers' tastes and preferences around the world. Um, our company, of course, uh, has only global brands and we need to develop products that uh, will appeal to people's tastes uh, around the world. And I think design agencies can help us uh, with uh, knowledge about what uh, younger people, generations of the future, uh, might like. I think designers uh, can make uh, complex technological things uh, look easy to use or make them easy to use uh, and they can make uh, new technologies uh, look appealing. Um, we are seeing a lot of technological change in the car industry for example. Uh, electric mobility is coming and I think our job for instance is uh, to make that so desirable that people will want to make that change. Uh, BMW i uh, is an example of that. So when we are looking for external agency support, we, we look for a good mixture of qualities because we, at the end of the day, we want a full service. One of the things that I keep um, systematically uh, challenging us designers with is to be as transparent and as clear in what we define design to be for a company. And what we as designers bring in terms of value. If you take a product like uh, we've been pretty successful with, like the connected light bulbs, Hue, um, we can envision certain use cases as we build out that proposition and we put the technology in place. Um, but as soon as we put that out into the market, um, what we found is it's actually much more effective to open the, uh, the, the SDKs, the, the developer kits, and put out APIs that allow other people to develop applications on our platform. I mean, this isn't new to the software world, but it is new to a fairly traditional industry like Philips. We also worry a lot about collaboration. So all of the industries we work in today are very international industries. Teams are generally distributed. The amount of data is very large. And when you try and work with all of those issues at the same time, you have to actually produce software which is um, highly collaborative. People need to be able to uh, work together on a single object or a single piece of the film in a very efficient way. And we worry a lot about those things too. At large companies, uh, the big challenge is also double. <laughs> the first one is when you need to align the different departments to generate a new idea, a new concept. But once you have overcome the design phase, the, the second challenge is to deploy it because you need so much creativity in the installation phase, in installing something new in your operations than to create that new concept. I think design consultancies or, or designers uh, will play a big role in the future. Um, designers can actually help organize uh, new things that are happening in society and turn them into shapes uh, that people understand uh, and want to use. In the long run, um, I think most of the companies have realized that a purely figure-driven analyst approach does not work. So they are looking to become more consumer-centric, looking for consumer-driven innovations. And um, buzzwords like user experience, design thinking have arrived in the minds of top managers. And um, I think there's a potential danger that design is seen as part of a user experience process instead of being seen as the very core discipline of creating this holistic user experience. Design conferences like the IDSA event are very important. I think designers themselves should define the next level of design.
Well, interestingly enough, what I think is, is maybe one of the, the, the main characteristics or um, uh, one of the main qualities that I might be looking, uh, apart from, of course, being very professional at whether it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's product design or whether it's uh, user experience, for instance, is the fact that a company doesn't come with a recipe but adapts to a specific problem at hand. And an ability to frame a problem or frame a content and deliver something that is very visually impacting and that I can use then for the decision makers to actually wrap their heads around. As we now look at connected, uh, let's say, healthcare and, uh, and uh, lighting propositions and we start to connect large amounts, large amounts of data to the cloud, we need uh, advanced skills in building algorithms, uh, in, in interpreting data and in visualizing data. And uh, there are design teams, design consultants out there who are a lot more used to working in this way than perhaps we are. It's a skill I believe we've got to build within our own design team, but to get us there quicker, I'm much more open to working with design agencies to, uh, to help us uh, take some quick steps forward and accelerate our learning. From a tool creator point of view, uh, we worry increasingly about um, how easy our tools are to buy, for example. Um, we also worry about how technical our tools have to be, so there is certainly a greater move uh, amongst our customers and our future customers to wanting things to be uh, not necessarily simpler, but less technical. So trying to do things that don't get in the way of people's creative processes. I think that a design company uh, should be able to address properly what is the level of disruption that a large company is able to accept. Uh, I observe that the big challenge of design companies is to be understood. Design is not just styling, it's a strategic tool. In my mind, uh, customers' preferences or ideas about uh, certain products do seem to drift apart around the world. Uh, and uh, it becomes harder then uh, to design uh, global products. I think it's very important to understand uh, the regional demands and preferences of the customers. Um, for example, cooking habits in Europe change from border to border. Every few hundred kilometers you have different co cooking habits. Extractor hoods in, in China look much more different than in Europe or the United States where you have those filters because they use a completely different oil, much thinner, where, uh, which you have to collect underneath. Or in, in the United States, for example, Thanksgiving, really one day in the year, defines the cavity size of the appliances. So I think there are huge differences, but um, however, we follow a global design approach with one design language which helps the customer uh, to identify our products as Bosch products worldwide. What I value in European design firms is that, yes, we have uh, heaps of history, but we also are small countries, relatively speaking. And we interact with one another quite a bit because Europe has become, you know, one of the world's first markets. And whether um, I am designing solutions for Spain or if I'm designing solutions for the northern countries, um, it's always interesting to have different point of views and we have within Europe a microcosm of all these different perspectives. I think Australia and New Zealand are ahead of us when it comes to the service design industry. The, they've got designers in banks, they've got designers in government. So it's really embedded. We don't have designers in government in yeah. Spain or in France. No, no, not really. And we should. We should. There will probably be nuances depending on how mature an economy is. Um, and, and of course there will be difference depending on the product categories that we are within. If they are heavily you know, anchored into a very specific cultural notions or not. But 
my my belief is that we're becoming more and more global, not so much in all the same, but more global in the sense of all applying good design thinking to come up to the best solutions, um, you know, uh, for the users and for our customers. In the past, we've been able to more drive for global scale and build global platforms and, uh, and kind of do top-down solutions, if we want to look at it that way. Um, what we're seeing now is much more um, kind of locally driven initiatives and demands coming from markets, from countries, uh, for more locally relevant solutions. At the same time I'm doing that, empowering the markets to come with their ideas, I also need to be joining dots up and seeing patterns and thinking about platforms which I can build on a global level, which can enable this localization of a concept, localization of a product or service, um, whilst leveraging a global platform. Um, so this is again that kind of uh, paradigm that we're in at the moment, thinking globally, building scale, bringing costs down, making things affordable and accessible, but at the same time making sure that they're relevant and meaningful uh, at a local context in different cultures and so on. And uh, Chinese consumers are not looking to just take off the shelf European or American solutions, they're more and more confidently asking for relevant local solutions. Uh, and you know, as, as China does that, uh, we'll see other countries also starting to, to, to ask for this as well. I think our European customers face very similar challenges to our American customers. Um, they are dealing with a global customer base, they're having to work and make their presence known globally, and they all face challenges from emerging territory. The real differences don't really come for us down to cultural language, they come down to um, some of the local requirements, often of which are quite technical. I think because, the, um, because we deal in a very global industry, uh, different parts of the world are moving at different speeds, uh, but the overall context of how creative work is done seems to be pretty universal, uh, certainly amongst our customers. So I think the, um, the innovation is driven from different regions at different speeds with slightly different requirements, but everything moves to being a global issue very quickly. And it's the intangible combination of the infrastructure, the people, the organisations, uh, the heritage both in film and design work that still makes London a really strong centre for our customers. In, uh, in terms of uh, design thinking uh, needs, no, it's the same for a Mexican company or a Japanese one. What is different is the design because the needs and the insights in each country are different and depends a lot uh, from their culture.